spilled water on my shirt like a like a slob. Like oh, a you got a drinking problem, huh? Hmm, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah. So my dad would always say that. Oh, you got a drinking problem. <laughs> my mouth is small and my water glass is big. That's the problem. Hello, friends and fiends. Welcome to Bugs Need Heroes, a podcast where an artist and an entomologist team up to illustrate the inspiring abilities of insects by creating a bug-themed superhero. I'm Amanda. I'm Kelly. Producer Derek and Desdemona and Rotunda are also here. Uh, before we get started creating this bug-inspired hero, what's bugging you, Kelly? Um, had a pretty, I don't know, had a pretty good weekend. I've got nothing to Classic complain about, which no I know you problems, hate. problems, Kelly. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I have problems, but no one cares about them. So, I don't... <laughs> so the very pedestrian problems. You never yeah. try to like. Uh... I, I went out. Uh, I went out and had dim sum with friends yesterday, and then Friday I saw a friend of the pod, Ped. We're planning some oh, research Ed. together for the for the summer, and he gave me this plant. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> classic Ped. Just shows up with plants and ham. You visit Ped, you get a plant. That's how it works. Yeah, I recently got some succulents from my husband's boss. He was like, she was, oh. I guess she just had too many succulents. And I was like, thank you. But also I have a ton of succulents in the front yard. <laughs> Everyone so has I, a ton of succulents. <laughs> well, they're, they're, you know, but it does make me want to get like cute little pots for the succulents, which I know mm. is a dangerous, slippery slope. Well, they make, so. they make like teeny tiny little pots, like. Like yeah. this guy. You can yeah. put a succulent. I don't know if they like it, though. I have no idea what plants like. If I knew what plants liked, I'd have a lot more plants. <laughs> <laughs> what I really want, my nerd heart desires, is a little Bulbasaur so that when the succulent is in the Bulbasaur, the succulent Aww. becomes part of the Bulbasaur. I like that. I would they also really allow round an succulents, too. Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> I know you're not a Pokemon girly like like I am, but <laughs> I appreciate them. Uh, I love that Pokemon got children, like millions of children, into nature. So that's cool. I'm good with it. What's bugging you? Anything? Just life. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that allowed to be an answer? Just, uh, you know, you know, it just it just feels like it's hard to get traction these days. It just feels like mm. every time I get one thing done, I'll tell you what's bothering me. I'll tell you what's bothering me. I'm trying to reorganize my living room to try and make it better. Uh-huh. But I'm at that stage where you pull everything away from where it belongs. Oh. And now you have to put it back. And like that moment is so overwhelming of this. Like now everything's not. No, where no, it it's belongs. a mess. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, no, a- the couch is wrong. This toy tower is wrong. This laundry basket is wrong. So uh yeah i'm not sure i made any improvements i think i might have just moved things around so we'll now, see you don't know where anything is <laughs> and i don't know where anything too i reorganized the cord drawer so does that count for anything yeah yeah i'll give you like two stars for that thank you thank you <laughs> yeah all the cords are now <laughs> still a mess but now they're wrapped up on themselves mm. and then thrown in the drawer kind of organized yeah that's fine I mean, I also have to pick them up one by one every time I look for a cord. But other than that, well, um, I'm wearing I'm wearing my cicada tank top today. Oh, yeah, they're out. They're Even coming. though we're not covering them, uh, we've already covered. Check out the cicada episode for, for that. Uh, today we're actually talking about a moth um, for Mother's Day, from if you will. Mother's Day. <laughs> I I thought of that at like. We'll have to check the text message there, but like at 10 30 yeah. at night, I was like, oh, I gotta text Kelly right now. I'm not doing moths for Mother's Day. So it was like midnight my time, and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> Great. Man, I go to bed. Stop thinking about moths. <laughs> I love that you're thinking about moths. And it's at nighttime, and moths are generally nocturnal. So it's a right. good time That's to be different about between them. moths and butterflies. Is one, it... of, yeah, one of several differences, but it's, I'd say that's the biggest. The, the biggest. Nocturnal. And diurnal? Is there that close? Oh, yes! <laughs> and the fuzziness. Moths tend to be fuzzier because mm-hmm. they need to keep that heat in they've collected all day so they can be active in the evening. 
you notice butterflies aren't particularly fuzzy because they're just getting that sunlight and then no. they go to, they rest in the evening they are surprisingly scaly that's yes. the thing people, people are always surprised to find out that butterflies are made of scales <laughs> yeah their wings their are wings very are scaly. scaly yeah um which you, you were saying that you can get like terribly allergic to the scales yes i know a scientist who is now allergic to butterflies after working with them because of the scale situation <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if you have to list that on like your medical forms, like allergic to penicillin, <laughs> butterfly scales, butterflies, <laughs> butterflies. <laughs> I'm allergic to butterflies. Maybe I don't know. I wonder if there's I'm anyone who's like naturally allergic to it, like they just come out, like they're cooked that way, the way that you can be cooked allergic to peanut butter. Maybe what a horrible thing to find out. I think it'd be a hard thing to find out though, because they generally yeah. don't land on you. Right, you'd have to like go to a butterfly garden and then almost die, and then see, <laughs> take your chances. <laughs> You know, she's pretty tough, but she did go to a butterfly garden and almost died. So. <laughs> How tough can she be, really? We went to a butterfly garden a few years ago at the Museum of Natural History in New York, and the butterflies do land on you. It's yeah, yeah, they're not really shy cool. at the butterfly garden. It's really, really cool. There's one in Seattle that we visited a few years ago, and I've got some pretty funny pictures of of them trying to drink our sweat and our eyeball juice. Uh, oh, no, like, your you. the amount of butterflies they have to like maintain there like of chrysalises that are like about to hatch like it's wild mm -hmm. i'd yeah. love to have someone who like runs a butterfly garden on someday because it feels like there's so much that goes into that that is so much more than just like here's a room full of plants and we also put butterflies in here right uh derek is exposing the butterflies dark secrets in the chat over here <laughs> Yeah, they do. They land on feces and decaying animals. They need nutrients. They're that drinking that. <laughs> doesn't just come from juice. flowers. Yeah. And salt. Yeah, they need salt. Yeah, salt, salt. I see them, on, them like, on the road. Horse salt licks always had butterflies on them. Yeah, what? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Salt licks is a funny idea to me. Like, you don't get enough salt in your diet. So here's a cube of salt to lick at your <laughs> leisure. Um. Well, so today we're going to talk about the peppered moth and um, the peppered moth is kind of a classic example of natural selection and uh, an evolution in action that we've, you know, we, we have pretty good data on uh, and what, what air pollution or pollution in general can do to a population of animals in a pretty short time. Um, we'll start with well, first, have you ever heard of a peppered moth? No, but Some it sounds people like learn about this in biology. I'm not like shocked to hear that name. Peppered moth sounds like a sounds, sounds like a real moth. <laughs> sounds like, sounds like that's a moth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're in uh, North America. They're in Europe, um, United Kingdom, Japan. They're kind of all over the place, uh, and generally, well, they're they're part of the family uh, Geometridae, which is inchworms. You know, inchworms. I mean, I you say inchworm, and I imagine the 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 little caterpillar doing his little like yeah 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 those guys. They're a member of that family, that inchworm family. Um, I think they might also be called like stick caterpillars because they resemble they resemble sticks. That's their deal as larvae. I guess I've never considered that that'd be like its own whole group before. But like now that you say that, other caterpillars kind of uh, you know body roll along. <laughs> drag themselves yeah the inchy guys huh i science is wild the things you guys categorize <laughs> <laughs> yeah we're like massive ocd we categorize everything yeah everything has to have like categories and characteristics yeah uh, how else can you know how else do we know what their what their whole deal is without taxonomy that's taxonomy but uh yeah cate categorization uh, yeah, so these guys are um, a type of stick or inchworm caterpillar. Life history, I'm going to say right now, is it's pretty boring. Females lay like 2,000 eggs uh, in the crevices of tree bark. They become, you know, they metamorphose like all the other moths out there and become adults. What's cool is when they're adults. Uh, so they come in a few different kinds of color forms mm. so you know mm. yeah yeah oh so the, so you so you're not always sure what kind of coloring you're gonna get till the end there well well it's it's dictated by genes 
So oh. the the uh, the dominant dominant form, uh, dominant homozygous, which means it comes with two. Remember big A, little a from biology. Yes, in high school. I, I yeah. think we talked about it in the Katie did episode as well. That they. Oh yeah, they come in pink and green, and somehow the pink's the dominant, and yet we always only see them green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's similar to that. Um, it, this is called, uh, well, well, all right. So the dominant homozygous are we'll call it two big A's, and that moth comes out dark, highly meant. We call that melanistic. So very yes, big A. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was doing my Meta's big making A. The like, big a. <laughs> I want to keep track. I'm a tactile Get, learner. You got to keep track. <laughs> Write it down. Um, so they come out more like black in color, still mm -hmm. like, maybe you might see a little bit of speckles in there. And then you have your intermediate, which is heterozygous. So it's big A, little a, mm -hmm. and it comes out most, uh, white ish, but with a lot of gray, black speckles on it, kind of tighter speckles. Dare I say pepper, pepper, <laughs> peppery, peppery. Uh, and then you have the homozygous recessive little a little a and that is um the it's more white it's much more white mm. and it's finely speckled so you're seeing like a clear transition from white and speckled to like grayish and speckled to black interesting so kind of like a birch tree look versus <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 okay 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 i'm um, with you i'm with you that's good. Yeah, you're well, we can think about it too. Uh, think about leopards. So you have spot the spotted leopard and you have the black jaguar. Oh, yeah. The, it's the, the same. Jaguar. Yes. It's it's funny to me. That, does that happen in more animals than just the jaguar is the famous one, right? You got the the spotted and the the much rarer. Although I've heard I've heard that it's not as rare as we think it is, but we just don't see them because they're oh, maybe the, the, the like, camouflage is that good the camouflage is that good that we just we're like oh okay there's for every 10 there's one you know black panther but actually mm -hmm. it's more common than that but we just ha can't see the other three black panthers that are hanging around <laughs> because they're just maybe. not visible. yeah well i think it's a little bit it's also a little different because i, I don't think there's an intermediate color for them yeah so thinking about intermediate might be easier to think about flowers. So sometimes you have a red flower and a white mm -hmm. flower. And then if you cross them, the offspring are pink. That's genes so are more like in, in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or peas. I think peas are a classic example. Of yeah. That. Peas are you, like, what's his name? Gregor, Gregor Mendel, Mendel, the famous monk. Um, monk Had a lot of time on his hands and a lot of, <laughs> a lot of people. Father, father of genetics, I believe. <laughs> Bernard Mendel. Um, yeah. So we get these three types. Uh, and that so, do you know why po that polymorphism oh sorry that's okay. polymorphism. polymorphism do we know why polymorphism doesn't happen in more animals because like you don't see like i don't know a gorilla like oh this one's a peppered gorilla you know <laughs> like <laughs> it doesn't seem to happen in other kinds of mammals uh and oh and, and other mammals it like why is the jaguar cornering i the think it i think it occasionally does Oh, it's okay. just probably not super common. And when we think about what traits survive in the wild, it's who survives to, pe to right. pass those traits on, right? So if you do have a differently colored animal, uh, well, even like like the Katie did. So that pink is the dominant, the dominant trait, but it's really easy to be eaten. So there's just not a lot of them. Are you Googling oh, something? I'm Googling something I'm trying to... I just I saw this thing over the weekend, and I'm trying to remember where it was. Mm -hmm. It was Florida. I thought it was Florida. So I saw this thing over the weekend that was about there's these big old invasive snails in Florida, like just real honking guys. Okay. Like too big for the local birds to eat because their like beaks couldn't get deep enough into the snail shell. Blah 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 blah. So like all the I think they're called snail kites, and all the snail kites just like left. They were like. Mm nothing for me here i gotta go and then like 10 years later the snail kites are back but mm -hmm. their beaks are longer and now they can eat the invasive snails right because and the snail because kites... the guys who stayed were the guys who could still eat the snails right and so now a whole generation later i mean i don't know how long bird generations are but <laughs> 10 years later 
the the numbers of birds are increasing again because the only right. guys who stayed and lived were the guys with the long beaks and they're like oh it's evolution in like right in front of us we can see it, <laughs> it, was, it was just, i just saw this thing over the weekend i think it was on pbs that's cool that's that. very yeah. cool so it's kind of that yeah. idea you know so yeah similar similar strategy so yeah we've got these three forms right and uh what's interesting with this is so industrial revolution let's when oh. did that start? It's like 18 1840 yeah yeah like mid 19th century for sure really really kicks off those steampunk and, boys <laughs> <laughs> and then in england so some scientists notice wow this species of moth we're seeing fewer and fewer of the speckled and more of this melanistic black kind and it's because the trees are now covered in soot in because it's dirty outside yes it's very dirty these trees used to be pretty white i think there's a lot of birch in um in the uk and they yeah. they grow like and they grow different types of lichen on the tree and the moths will rest during the day here's my moth resting during the day on the tree either on the tree trunk or they like to be kind of under the branch or on a twig and when they're speckled, either intermediate or the lighter speckled mm -hmm. color, they're blending in with that lichen on right. the tree. So industrial revolution starts chugging, starts killing the lichen on the tree, and then the trees become black. So now this entire population over a span of maybe, I think maybe it was around a decade, shifts to this dark, dark color because the birds can't see them because it's because they're sitting on dirty trees now dirty because, trees yes because we we've, we've made everything sooty from 10 feet down <laughs> <laughs> no that's horrible news <laughs> <laughs> wow okay so the so the the white moths just got eaten in such numbers that only the dark moths were left yeah isn't that wild that is wild i mean that really shows the power of like us, us. Uh, yeah, yes. that we're like affecting the environment in what can the only hubris. be described real time. <laughs> wow. I mean, we, it that was the first time that the term industrial melanism was coined in biology. Industrial melanism sounds like a like a I don't sounds very problematic. It, I mean, it's it's problematic, but like imagine the Afropunk. Uh, mm. A series called it. <laughs> oh industrial melanism <laughs> that, yeah that'd be very cool actually i mean i kind of hope i kind of hope someone takes that and runs with it yeah but, uh, please do. i would i would read that comic so yeah the, it's called industrial melanism and this is not the only animal we've seen this with i think it's mostly bugs it might be a few plants um there are well, other moths that have experienced similar things living in polluted areas where they change color they or they they're not changing color, but their their population is shifting towards right. the ones that make it colors that yeah that were already in that system. Well, I, I think um, Doctor Kite was saying, Doctor Scott was saying that like part of the reason they use bugs is because you can get through several generations really quickly. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that they'd be the ones that are like we gotta we gotta change systems, boys. We're they're switching over, charge. boys. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas you know it doesn't take you know an orca lives doesn't start breeding till it's 15 or whatever and it lives yeah. 80 years so lives with its parents and yeah like, exactly actively they're breed gonna... if they're siblings yeah there's all kinds of um right whereas a bug is about. just getting through it as fast as they can they're speed <laughs> in life yeah there it's uh i think it's pretty incredible uh and, and further so we saw similar changes like this in north america during the industrial revolution and other parts of europe we did not see it in Japan, in populations in Japan, because those moths are not found in industrialized areas. Right. So it's almost like a control. Interesting. Interesting. So you're so they stayed. Downtown London, 1885. <laughs> there's Peaky Blinders. I think Peaky Blinders later <laughs> like that. But and then there's these moths who have shifted from from speckle boys into panthers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sky. pretty incredible. Um, so I want to show you 
and and the the viewers because we're recording this that way um some examples so if derek can show amanda the first moth and this is our this is our typical we'll call it typica is sometimes referred to that color morph typica your 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 fictional daughter here's my yeah. daughter typica <laughs> so look at how you can see how peppered yes they are. Peppered. They're very I can see beautiful. why they were called peppered moths yeah and that's the regular form that's like the most it was the most common uh, you can see how it blends in really nicely with li lichen if you can picture lichen mm -hmm. on a birch tree um, and then there is the intermediate form oh the, the pictures come from wikipedia by the way we're, we're using the creative commons license for that so we're not getting those uh, classic incredible. moth antenna you yeah, look at those antennae <sighs> kind of pick up those chemical cues find them ladies so yeah, if Derek can share the oh yeah, and close up on the antennae. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, the burn antenna on a extreme on a close up. Me too. All right, so here's the intermediate. Okay, okay. So it's a little bit more, I would say, sooty looking. Uh, you can see how it's more gray. It doesn't have that bright. Yeah, it definitely bright looks. It definitely looks sooty. I was definitely like he fell into the fireplace, and then I was like, "Oh, ooh, oh, got out yeah. of there." That was a close Whoops. one. <laughs> uh, and then the the final the final version is the the melanistic version, which we called uh, carbonaria in in Europe. Which I think it's funny because I think of spaghetti. <laughs> so yeah derek can show the dark one that would be great the sith lord moth oh See? man look at that wow it's dark yeah beautiful gorgeous it's, it's it the goth like he's moth. wearing a, a very very luxurious mink coat it mm. does it almost the scaling detail in the wings to me and all that fur looks like it's covered in soot. Yeah, it really Isn't does. It? Even has a little bit of that shine that soot sometimes has. Mm -hmm. Wow. They're quite beautiful. I think all more, all three morphs are very, uh, very, very pretty. I like when we have shiny Pokemon, but as, as actual animals. <laughs> actual animals. <laughs> we have lots of shiny bug examples, you know, uh, even the emerald ash borer is quite lovely. I guess. And here's here's so here's two of them together. Oh, okay. So these are two different on a birch. morphs of this the same bug, right. but he's they're presenting differently. So you can see with this cleaner, uh, this cleaner yes. tree, how the lighter morph is a little harder to see. Um, can you see you have located both? I have located both. both. I've located okay. both. <laughs> My superior front front facing vision has located yes. both. <laughs> You're a predator, Amanda. You're <laughs> use this. I'm use a your predator. Front, your front facing, front facing eyes are for predators. Me and Big uh, Bird. You big, big. Oh, frightening. <laughs> yeah, Big Bird. He's got forward facing eyes. Big He's Bird a is a predator. <laughs> Terrifying. But yeah, <laughs> so you can see how how why this would change just by looking at them on this birch tree right here. Pretty incredible. That's amazing to me you know because yeah. we talk a lot about like well evolution did this but like I, it's not even like someone's doing it the bugs aren't choosing to get darker no. it's literally just that like those are the ones that made it through mm -hmm. this the sift of life <laughs> those are the guys who fell through as little gold nuggets yeah before we were just talking about the adults right now but uh the the caterpillars can also change color are the caterpillars also being affected by the same? No, they can just shift between green and brown, depending on what surface you put them on. Um, oh, so they're changing in like real time. They're like they, chameleonizing. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think we have a photo of that too. Again, all the photos are Wikipedia. <gasps> yeah. That. Convincing. I oh, mean, bugs the, have cool power. <laughs> look at the camouflage. Look at how much like a stick. I see why they were they, called stick caterpillars earlier. They both wow. look like even the the end, so the head and the the terminating end of the the abdomen. You can see it looks like little Sp stick buds. Bam risk. Spam. <laughs> Amanda's getting a spam call. Turn that thing off, Amanda. 
Hell no, spammers. Now is not the time. Please, spam. <laughs> I'm trying to learn about stick bugs. Not stick bugs, although we should cover stick, stick bug. bugs. Stick caterpillar. Whole, whole different, <laughs> different animal. But yeah, well, I, I love... mean, when you're a bug, you gotta look like a stick. I feel like that comes with the, comes with the territory. Lots of bugs are fairly sticky, but um, I can't. Not goopy, just stick like. <laughs> What's well, brown and looks like a stick? <laughs> a variety of bugs. <laughs> Many bugs, but I can't get over the detail. If you even look yeah. at their bodies, they look like bark. It looks like they have bark. I mean, they even have like those little patches where like oh maybe a bud's gonna grow here mm -hmm. mm. but it's psych bug yeah very very cool so you, we, these animals are really built to they're built for camo they're built to hide uh they rest on the trees during the day uh well the larvae the caterpillars are eating they're like munching leaves the whole time but i very hungry very very hungry very <laughs> But it's pretty, uh, I don't know, I think it's pretty incredible. Uh, and then, so Industrial Revol Revolution happens, right? We're getting all black moths because mm -hmm. the trees are nasty. And it's the only way they're hiding right. from birds. The child, uh, so, the, the children are inside doing labor instead of squashing them yeah, in the forest. You know? Exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but they're little fingers and machines. Well, we start to make environmental regulations here in europe and the uk and, and all over the world we start to realize we need to clean things up we can't really live like this yeah. it's not good for us um who cares about the wildlife but it's not good for humans so we have to yeah we gotta hear <laughs> i keep getting the black lung trying to play in the park yeah change our standards and as these regulations go through and as uh industrial processes get cleaned the population shifts back so there's like a parabola the of yes of pepper 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 black pepper 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 pepper. Mm -hmm. So how many of the the melanistic guys are still hanging around? Uh, obviously some because I I just saw a picture of them. <laughs> <laughs> but like a significant amount, or are they like what's the population split now? Is it still most and now it's back to mostly pepper? It's back to mostly peppered. Yeah, because they're blending in with the lichen. The lichen came back on the trees as well. So you want you want that speckled pattern. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder if anyone's done it. I'm sure someone has. But like put the two maps on top of each other of like, here's the population, you know, demographics of dark versus peppered. Mm -hmm. And like put that right over a pollution map if you see a one to one correspond like could you study the pepper moth as an oh. like, indicator of pop of, of local pollution Pro uh, probably but i think really by the time they start changing we would visually know something's right. wrong <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair actually <laughs> by the I mean, time they're like we gotta we gotta put on our our dark coats they're we're like are the trees so dirty yeah well i have uh so we've got all this this, uh, says, yeah. smog isn't subtle yeah. like the dragon <laughs> of your smog is not subtle not even a little bit um so this Especially when he's played by Benedict Cumberbatch this was, ah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> this was um a bit kind of a big deal we noticed this so some scientist uh Bernard Dr. Bernard Kettlewell from Oxford University wanted to he did a whole study on this he went out, he watched which moths were being eaten by the birds, uh, and he came to the conclusion that the darker moths were definitely being eaten more often um, because the pollution, you know, had settled or whatever. Right. And um, this is really cool because this is what we call directional selection, where you go from one extreme uh, to, to the next, and it's being very, very easily seen to be pushed in one direction. Right. So in this case, during the Industrial Revolution, we went from black moths and then back to our regular peppered. Uh, he did this study, he had tag moth, he published it, and then he had a bunch of controversy. Oh, this, no. <laughs> I know you love Goss. Can, I, I love, love hot Goss. Can you say his name again for me? Bernard Kettle? Bernard Kettlewell. That's a hobbit name if ever I heard one speaking of smog. <laughs> He was English, so you can picture him out there like 
as a cute little hobbit doing that's step one that's step one of a, a hobbit <laughs> we shouldn't infantilize a, a well renowned scientist but yeah infantilize the hobbits are a noble breed how dare you <laughs> they are i, I consider myself a hobbit to be honest <laughs> all five foot two of me yeah derek's saying he's dead now so it doesn't matter but it still matters <laughs> you know we don't just don't besmirch the dead <laughs> So, so Kettle, Kettlewell does this thing. He's like, look at this. This is natural selection. We are seeing this in, in kind of real time. Incredible. It started, they put it in all the textbooks, the biology and the, the evolution textbooks. Kids are being taught this as a fantastic example of natural selection. Uh, and then the critics come. And yeah, come. In, the, in the 60s, so there was a guy, Theodore... David Sargent, another scientist, he replicates the study. He did not get the same results. He's like, the birds don't have any preference. They're just eating Whoever moths willy-nilly. Yeah, the camouflage doesn't matter. They're doing whatever. And he goes so far as to claim Kettlewell must be training the birds. So this is slander. This is some slander. I don't know. I feel like I feel like <laughs> camouflage plays a role in how often you get eaten is pretty much a basic statement it's of like how, of camouflage. how camouflage works. <laughs> like, why does camouflage exist if not to affect how often you get eaten? Yeah. Just, I don't think so. I don't think so. I I think someone had a grudge against Kettlewell because feels a little personal. It feels uh, a little personal. I mean, I know how much you scientists love to hold grudges. We are a very grudgy bunch. Especially the paleontologists. <laughs> <laughs> you all are mad at each other. Yeah, I saw Jurassic Park. I saw know, <laughs> I've seen multiple documentaries about <laughs> about the, the, the fossil rushes of, of the yeah. early 20th century oh, oh. where they were just like destroy each other's like dinosaur sites and stuff. So they're like, yeah, you know, discovered this dinosaur. The Bone Wars. The bone, bone Wars. Also a great name. I know we're not a we're not a paleontology podcast, but I would love to do an episode about the Bone Wars. The bone it was a wars. wild time. Uh, I think you as a historian, Amanda, would enjoy I it's one of those things of like I'll be watching something about like the bone wars you know whatever it is as t imagine teenage me so basically the same but I'm like a little baby um <laughs> and like I'd be watching something a la the bone wars and it's one of the things that my mom would come and be like what are you watching and I'd be like oh this is a really fascinating documentary about the bone wars and about how uh this doctor hates this doctor and then this doctor and then that I'm like, I could just see my mom's eyes glaze over because, like, the minute I said it was a documentary about history, she was like, "I'm out." Bye. It's so it's so catty. Oh, the whole thing is so dope. catty. Yeah. I mean, to this day, though, there's so much. I mean, dinosaurs is kind of like a wild subject because mm -hmm. how do you really know, like, if this dinosaur has been talked about before? Because it might just be the same dinosaur at a different age. Which mm -hmm. is like a whole thing. I think with uh, Pachycephalosaurus, they're having to deal oh, with a bunch of yeah. like, is it a Draco Rex? Is it uh, just a juvenile? You know, because look at bugs. Look There's how a, a lot wildly of that different them. bugs look. Triceratops and different yeah. types of triceratopsids. And, and is right. this another species or is this an, a child or, you know, like a. Because like, when do those horns come in? Yeah, we, we don't know. Like a rhino isn't, isn't like in a modern day equivalent elephants rhinos other things with tusks like they don't yeah. they don't come out with those tusks how yeah. long before they grow those tusks I yeah they come know. out with little nubs usually it's like a yeah little, there's like a little nubby where it like yeah, will, yeah. will appear but, but all of that like it yeah it just breeds a lot of fighting and that fighting has always been around in science scientists fight with each other all the time part of it comes from our our nature as skeptics scientists mm -hmm. are skeptics cynics <laughs> <laughs> We're also cynics, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of very cynical, like environmental scientists, especially. Yeah. How could you not right now? Any, any colleges? Yeah, we 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 get together and we cry in our our beers and our whiskey. Mm -hmm. You and Pen uh, this weekend, we're just like, yeah. Pen and I crying. Plan. Keep this one alive at least. <laughs> Pen is a great greenhouse at Monmouth University, by the way, and he does plant sales sometimes. So if you're in the area, get yourself some pen plants. Fantastic. And I'm going, of course, going to release a hundred butterflies into his greenhouse so that it then becomes <laughs> a butterfly a bug house. attraction. <laughs> and he can charge people a dollar to come stand with all the butterflies. Yeah, just there's plenty of space in it. 
Uh, <laughs> but thankfully, Pet, Pet and I don't really argue about things because uh, we're pals. But you're also scientists, in different fields, though. Different fields, yeah. <laughs> um, a lot of scientists too. There's a lot of headbutting. There's a lot of oh, yeah. We disagree about the Spider Verse. Derek is is reminding me we're not getting into that right now. <laughs> not the time. We don't have we don't have the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. So the, the fighting happens. This is the, so Theodore David Sargent makes this argument accuses him of trading birds wild in the 60s then the 90s happen scientists are still criticizing this study uh dr michael majerus wrote a book called melanism evolution in action and he's criticizing the study in there saying more experiments need to be done uh dr jerry coin is saying the same thing they don't think it's a great example of natural selection uh dr judith hooper comes in she claims that his experiment was fraudulent because we can't find his notes. Excuse me. This, uh, the the amount of scientists easy. that lose their notes are, are a lot. Oh, I mean, have you seen, like, they have their side of page between, like, Einstein's desk when he died. Yeah, and they're supposed to be organized and we're not yeah, organized. No. She went so far as to say the moth photos were staged and that they were dead and just placed on the trees so he could take pictures. Did, did, Kettlewell like upset somebody. I don't feel like. I mean, again, I, I haven't read it. I'm just getting the information I from know. you. But the information I've been presented with by you felt very milk toast. Scientist wise, <laughs> it, it feels very, very like, milk toast. I think the moths uh, do better when the birds can't see them. Yeah. And then every scientist up in arms. Forty years has been like, "How dare you say that? How dare you? How dare you come into my home and make the moths look like this?" Yeah, my it's it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> People be mad. I, again, I did not feel like this was controversial. They got so mad. All these scientists got so like butthurt about this that they that wasn't a curse. I can say that. I'm not, I'm not allowed <laughs> to curse on the podcast. Uh, but they got so butthurt about this, they demanded it be removed from textbooks as an example of natural selection. Get it out of here. We don't like As this. opposed to what? Are they citing something? Like, is there, maybe this is the answer. This is the inverse. There's someone that they all owe a favor to who has done a more recent, <laughs> like, they want this stuff natural, and they want his thing to get in. And they're like, we got to get, we got to get Tony's, uh, <laughs> experiment into the Tony's book. baloney experiment Tony's yeah. baloney experiment with the tigers we got it we got to get it in to the textbooks and dethrone kettlewell so maybe it's not even about malice towards kettlewell as much as it's they're trying to promote know. tony it the was baloney a tiger pile on an absolute like, like i said now we're in the 1990s and they're just piling on this guy i just i just fighting. really don't understand it's about to get juicier. Oh, <laughs> it gets... okay. Lay it on me. I'm ready for this hot scientist gossip. <laughs> so, so the scientists are on here and they're like complaining about this or whatever. So now we get to like the late nineties, the early aughts and Things the creation radical. creationists are popping in. Uh, so, of course. Here they so, come. <laughs> Philip E. Johnson's creationist goes, these moths were, they were glued to the tree trunks. There's no way that this was a real experiment and uh, and it's got to be a scam. And also that the moths never rest on tree trunks. They only rest under the twigs, like the little twigs on the branch or on the branch itself. They don't even rest on the trunks. So this is a scam. Who is this scamming? We don't make money. I know people think big also, science at this point, makes money off of these experiments. Big science is trying to trick us with the moths. <laughs> we lose trees. money. Mm. I don't think so. Ecologists make no money. Yes, I have like seen a moth. Oh, yeah. You work for big science. You know, so. <laughs> I, again, the idea that I'm a like moth. crying, I'm laughing so hard. About <laughs> the idea that moths rest on trees being like, you're trying to trick me. It's controversial. <laughs> controversial. Well, we don't know whether the moths do or do not. You know, there's. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Again, it just, just it just feels like, so far someone, to say like someone made someone mad somewhere. There's there's got to be a reason for this. There's oh, got to be something. <laughs> they're trying to bury Kettlewell's research for some reason because it also shows something that like 
Yeah, to say like yeah. the photos, the photos are doctored, and then he's gluing moths to trees, and they never rest on the. Oh my god! <laughs> Don't get me wrong. People have insane. definitely faked their experiments yes. over the years, oh. and there's you yeah. know documented cases. Of people are like, oh, mm, he he glued that jake the alligator man <laughs> together it turns out there aren't people with alligators for legs you know oh that I, fiji mermaid is just a dried up person <laughs> tied to a fish i got it this is horribly unethical <laughs> oh no um i could you know a healthy dose of skepticism especially Fine. absolutely Fine. and we I'm always fine. try to reproduce yeah oftentimes you'll see scientists reproduce each other's work right. to check to go you know what this yeah, feels yeah. a little bit weird to me let's just do the experiment again and like I said, that uh, uh, the other guy did it was it uh, oh Sergeant. So Sergeant Reed did it in the sixties and didn't get the same results. But to say that because you got different results, Kettlebell was training birds <laughs> to eat specific mobs. What is happening? What I'd also happening? need to know like the intelligence level of the birds. You know, <laughs> like are these and birds how many being trainable? How many species of bird do you think he's training to? Yeah. I think it's like one species of bird that's this just whole, eating this. This whole forest? Mm -mm. They're sleeper <laughs> agents for Kennewell. Makes me crazy. Birds well, are I, even real, as you know, Kelly. I knew that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The internet just made up birds. Has, I guess, well, has, has, have things come back around? Are we back on Kennewell's side so, now? So now we're coming in to the mid 2000s. Uh -huh. Michael Majerus comes back. He's back. Dr. Dr. Majerus goes, you know what? We've been fighting about this for like 40, 50 years. I'm going to just do the experiment. Majerus does it. He does the experiment. He observes 135 moths. He goes out in the field. He watches where they're resting. Uh, and while most of them do seem to prefer to rest like under, like if I'm a branch, like right under the twig, 37% are resting right on the tree trunk. So that creationist guy can F off. You know what I mean? <laughs> he, can, no. he, can, he can moth out of here. For all he can, yeah, get the moth out of here. You don't know what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, that's disproven. And then he notices that the birds are, are it's the same as Kettlewell's. Of course it is. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> the birds are eating the melanistic moths because they are sticking out like a sore thumb on the birch tree I vindicated I, I vindicated I for i can't i can't believe the drama we've been through for for, for a moth for the again, industrial to revolution that, moth, like, right? i think if the moth is easily seen it gets eaten more people got so mad about it i mean because sometimes it feels like these uh these experiments are like yeah of course but I have to go through the scientific rigor to yeah. be like, look, and that, and one plus one equals two. Let's all baseline on one plus one equals two. But that's two. great. We have to do that. We, we have, have to test that's everything. And that's, the what's, process. that's our job. Yeah. It feels like, it feels like Kenowell was like, one plus one equals two. And they're like, how dare you come into my education system and insist that one plus one equals two? <laughs> well, Don't you know there's, you know, alternative truth? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, th I think part of what made it a little controversial, at least in the beginning, was this study came out before, I think a decade or so before Darwin and, and Wallace, we should never forget Wallace, um, wrote Wallace. about <laughs> the real man, the yeah, real man wrote about the man. origin of species, uh, mm -hmm. natural, the natural selection, you know, Darwin's big claim to fame. So that is probably why in the beginning, Maybe this got some heat. Yeah. But but to extend out into the 2000s. It is feels wild. more like, I mean, especially with the creationist guy coming in, it feels more like a criticism of the idea of natural selection more yeah. than it does about like Kettlewell's experiment specifically. This idea makes someone uncomfortable. Right. Uh, at least for the, for the, on the creationist angle. I don't know. I don't know why the scientists were so like, oh, this doesn't feel like natural selection. Well, how? How does it feel? Me, although I'm a time traveler now, looking at this right. from the future, right? Exactly. It's probably easy for me to go. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Yeah, this yeah, makes why, total sense. Why did? Why was this the one you doubted? Because this one feels really straightforward to me. Yeah, exactly. Um, so 
Majerus does, he does, he redoes the experiment. He vindicates our friend Kettlewell. A hundred um, years later. A hundred years later. Yeah. <laughs> and he, unfortunately, Majerus passed away before he could publish the results. Oh. But his colleagues did it for him. And um, that paper was published in 2012. It's, it's titled something like the last, the last study of Michael Majerus. It was, yeah, very kind of his colleagues to finish that for him. Um, but I'm glad that it also vindicated Kettlewell, 2012, finally. And that, and we find this, this example of natural selection in textbooks all over the place. It never went away. So, so it's been about, I remember years. in, we school, still have like two decades before people start slandering our, <laughs> our boy of 2012 here. <laughs> yeah, just wild, right? Pathetic. Like if you're going to do something to, to criticize, I just keep getting stuck on the moths don't even rest on tree <laughs> trunks. Yeah, that that's one like, was wild. That's an me. observable fact. I've seen moths of resting on tree trunks. I've put my dainty hand upon a tree while in and the touched woods. the moth. Oh, oh, you know, as it, like, excuse me, part of me. Yeah. yeah, my bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and even if you want to say like this particular species doesn't rest on a trunk well we also know that it does it does 37 percent in majerus's study that's not a small <laughs> number either that's not like one in ten it's a big percentage like a, over a third of them choose to rest here yeah <laughs> i think 12 percent was uh was like on a branch and then the rest of them were on a, like under a twig but it's a big trunk and people also don't seem to realize how large yeah 37 percent is all is a lot of moths yeah it's just all oh, the controversy. I mean, yeah, this part might get cut. So, so sorry if this part has to get cut. I know we're in the video world now, but well, I can see why. I mean, looking at those those caterpillars and they look mm -hmm. so much like tree branches. Yeah, incredible. It feels miraculous that they look so much like tree branches. Yeah, but I, I, can, I can see why people believe in God, right? When you see exactly. something like that, when you zoom in on a leaf and realize how delicate mm -hmm. and intricate and fractal that feels so miraculous i can see how you want to say look at a higher power must have done this because look how beautiful mm -hmm. the world is but to say that moths don't rest on trees <laughs> God don't want them to, is <laughs> wild <laughs> well i i think it's perfectly okay to look at like you just say the structure of this beautiful leaf or the evolution of this moth this moth evolved from all, from a common ancestor from other moths, and, it, and now it is this thing. If you want to say the hand of a god touched that and made that happen, yeah, okay, I'm not I mean, mad about that. But don't already... pretend like science isn't real, real. or that <laughs> or that we, we don't have underlying mechanisms that make this happen. I I Fine. grew up religious. Science and religion don't have to fight. Exactly. To fight. I just don't understand why in this. But I mean, that's just how the world feels these days. It feels like you have to be on one team or the other and you're not allowed to be mm -hmm. in the middle in any way. But like science and We're religion. We're Kettlewell over here. <laughs> Unless it turns out he's a terrible guy. I have no idea. Right, I know we need to like, like, Google like, what were his Kettlewell over his experiment? Yeah. He's like, well, the, these. <laughs> he was a man of a certain time period. So he made yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Especially the people who are like looking into evolution yeah. and uh, some of the ideas that ventured forth. But I mean, we already talked about men, old, old father of genome himself, Mendel. I mean, he was a monk, like yeah. a Franciscan monk. Yeah, who so, wasn't like, afraid to understand. To exactly. Can, I can't do the shaking hands meme by myself. <laughs> we, we can be buddies. The strong arms. <sighs> so what, thinking about this, I think this is going to be very, very hard to make a superhero, maybe, for you. Yeah. I mean, we, <laughs> we said it was going to be Mother's Day. But so maybe we need but to it's draw. It's not off. really about being a mommy. It's it's, it's about... not really about being a mommy at all, is it? Mm. So it'd be camouflage and flight are the only powers I could really think of for this. I mean, yeah, camouflage, and they. I mean, that's all moths are really good for, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they fly away, and they are hard to see. Yeah, they're food, and they're pollinators. We'll, yes, will. we'll give it to them. Yeah, incredible. But I can't. Yeah, this story was full of intrigue, and um harsh criticisms and wild accusations saying he probably doctored those photos or glued moths to the tree <laughs> <laughs> <Little> <laughs> what? Moth. 
Yeah. Also, I feel like moths are so delicate. You couldn't glue them to the tree without seeing some very visible evidence that they've been manhandled onto a tree, you know? Yeah. Glue oh. glue is also a solvent, and I would imagine it may really damage the moth body, like to the point where I don't know if it'll stick yeah. to the tree. Don't try this at home, guys. Let's not figure not let's not figure this out in tree. real time. Um <laughs> while while you're while you're doing like a quick a quick draw up here but what are your thoughts on this whole thing as you draw i think i go sorry my, my voice will be farther away because i'm leaning over to my we, surface we can hear you it's good all right i think that it's really interesting to see a real life example of like how we are affecting nature mm -hmm. so immediately not just like we've taken away all the trees and now the orangutans don't have anywhere to live but like I guess the power of nature in that, like, the the, the bugs are going to figure it out, okay? Like, they're going to find a way. Life uh, uh, finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> like, the moths are like, okay, I guess it's dirty here now. I guess I'm going to be a dirty little boy, you know? That, like, nature's going to outlast us all because she's going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And we better get yeah. on board on on keeping nature happy as long as possible, or she'll just get rid of us. Like that's it. That's the story <laughs> here, bro. That's how we're we're die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a fascinating journey. I like I said, I remember this example from when I was in middle school. I think I learned this, uh, and then in ecology, ecology, you, know, you kind of go through this too. They really get into it because we talk about sort of the genetic aspects of it and, and how population diversity works and um, natural selection, obviously. Um, but going through and reading about this, and they did not teach us the criticism when I was in college and how wild that was. So I, I read about all that and was pretty, pretty mind blown about it. Um, but it, it's really neat. It's just really, really neat. And it's, yeah, it's horrible criticisms. They make no sense. Uh, oh, there was no merit. Uh, when I say Hooper, Hooper claimed that he like took pictures of dead moths. No one took her seriously on those claims. Thankfully, there was no merit to any of that. Uh, it was just got kind of crazy. Um, but for the, just the scientific integrity of the whole thing, it was fascinating, fascinating read for me and, and fascinating to write the notes. Uh, thanks, Derek. Producer Derek picked this bug for today, and I'm, I'm glad he did so that we could go over it together. Um, how many, how many, so how many legs do you give? Oh, Valerie did? Uh, Derek's partner chose this. Thanks. Thanks, Valerie. Um, good team. Good team. I probably shouldn't, I probably shouldn't draw street urchins, right? <laughs> She doesn't, she doesn't listen to the podcast. That's fair. Well, My no. husband doesn't listen either. Only Cody does. Only Cody listens. Cody gets the best boy award. Mm -hmm. Cody is the best boy. Of course, he gets the best boy award. What would you, how many legs do you think you'd give this? For the moth itself, a, a two. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a moth. You know, like it's not <laughs> doing anything fancy. But, all the drama around it, mm -hmm. deeply interesting. I'm always so generous. I always feel like I'm like six out of six likes. Uh, I'll give it. Hmm. I'm going to go five out of six for the dramas. It's fair. For the, for the dramas, mm -hmm. not for the book. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, that she was involved in all this, you know. Yeah, this is a very drama filled. Yeah, I think I'd also I would give it a one as a moth. Yeah, <laughs> just a moth. Sorry, buddy. And uh, yeah, pop that up to a total of five for the drama and for the teaching aspect of this moth. Like I said, it's been in textbooks everywhere for biology and evolution, and and the study of uh, industrial melanism. Coining that term is pretty cool. That came from these guys and gals and um yeah so for education wise and all the drama around it i'd say five i think five is pretty good yeah fair yeah. right yeah. fair 
So how are you drawing this, this hero? Um, well, we use the term hero loosely for this episode. Very loosely. I think I'm going, um, I'm going to get in trouble with my historical dress girlies. Sorry, <laughs> people. But I think I'm going to go fancy rich lady. And then her three urchins that she's taken in. <laughs> are they the inchworms? Uh, <laughs> they're the inchworms. And they are <laughs> varying levels of dirtiness. Oh, perfect. Yeah, so you can feel the... <laughs> So the coloration on the the color pattern change on the the urchins, if you will. Yes. Oh I man. Need a, yeah, I think I'm I'm gonna go slightly later than the technical industrial revolution time period. For okay. that, I only apologize. But just because, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> just because mid Victorian dress is so much more iconic than early Victorian uh, dress. Okay. I'm sorry. There's a period there, like the 1830s, 1840s, where the dress is just kind of like not sure what it's doing yet it's just like mm -hmm. really big but not particularly like right. iconic whereas so you're, the victorian full iconic that victorian dress of like the bodice to the the big rump with the rough you know that's so, yeah. so much more iconic you know that so. makes sense so i acknowledging that i'm slightly too late to technically be industrial revolution <laughs> It's a choice. All right. Have you, so we've been doing this podcast for um, almost two years now, I guess. Do you have a favorite, favorite hero? Mm, I've got several favorites. I've got a couple little, what's that word Derek uses? Blorbos. Uh, my special little, my special little guys. I mean, of course, Wooly Bear holds a special place in, in our hearts. He's kind of become the, uh, the unofficial the mascot. mascot. Yeah. A bit of our mascot, yeah. Uh, I love Dung Beetle just because he ended up looking exactly like my husband. Because he is Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave him a different skin tone just to like make it clear it wasn't Cody. But other than that, same dude. <laughs> uh, I love, I like the B team a lot. I, I really enjoyed B team. B team was fun. That I like Cinnabar Moth and her team. I like them all. I like them all. It's hard to choose a favorite it's of your hard children. To choose. It's exactly. I'm a mother to them all. Mo Happy Mother's Day to all, yeah. my, to all of my buggy babies. Except for you, <laughs> Emerald Ashborer. You know what you did. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, mother yeah, Mother's Day. Do you do anything for Mother's Day? Is that a thing? Do your kids like get you cute stuff? Do they draw you pictures and know that what I'm about to say is said with total love and no criticism. Oh boy. Cody is not very good at that aspect of being, you know, oh. like, cause he's the one, I mean, really what it is, is it's an, it's a gift from the children, but Cody has to facilitate that because yeah, the kids yeah. aren't, are I mean, I might get something this year cause, uh, cause my oldest is in school. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, unlikely that I'll, I'll get anything really. Yeah. I, I like Cody. I like the tchotchke. Pinterest mother's Facebook group gifts of like <laughs> my child's footprint on a plate. You're like, I oh, like that okay. stuff. I like yeah. it. I know it's kitschy and dumb and frankly, probably wasteful, but like, I like it. I you happy. My mommy heart is like, yes, basic. <laughs> give it to me. I want the basic mommy package at all times. So yeah, that's, it's nice though. You love your kids. I mean, there's a reason why it's popular. Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Uh, there's a reason because every mommy on the planet is like secretly like, give me a <laughs> necklace with their handprint. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my cats don't get me anything, so I get it. <gasps> oh Sorry. my gosh, my heart breaks. Okay, I gotta give her the feather. Because oh she, yeah, yeah. She's got, feathery. We, we talked about that that mothy feather for so long. Sometimes producer Derek weighs in on um, what the superhero should look like. Derek, do you have any suggestions? No. Nothing? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's a very boring mop. <laughs> it's really just the feud that happened behind the scenes and the natural selection, of course. Uh, re recently, some researchers actually figured out what uh, what gene this, this uh, sort of color change was connected to. How we doing on the art? 
I'm adding a <laughs> oh boy, a, a chim chimney boy to the bottom right now. Hold on, chim chimney. Also, he's way too cool. He's way too cool. He's okay with being covered in soot at all times because he makes <laughs> he makes bank. Oh yeah, yeah. He's the only one who can fit in the chimney, so he's making the money. Yeah, there's a. I know that was the whole thing. I think it's. I can't remember if it's a sounder or like a fit. I think it's sound. But there's a there's a short story about like a little soot boy who uh. But we had to read it in my um, class in high school. And then the high school teacher made us like look up all the diseases that come from climbing up chimney. Bleak. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Don't get yeah. any ideas about climbing up chimneys because <laughs> you will die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I hate to tell you this, but melanistic pepper moth is going to grow up to be a bootlegger. He's, he's way too cool. He's <laughs> too cool. This this middle this middle urchin is definitely named Pepper, by the way. <laughs> Pepper. Yeah, she's she's missing her front teeth. Oh, nice. What street urchin job should Pepper have? Um, news girl, like a newsie, right? You're a genius. Yes. <laughs> Remember when Chris, when Christian Bale was a newsie? No. Oh he was yeah, in newsies? he's in he's in Newsies. It's like his big break movie was the Newsies. Oh wow! Oh, what year was that? Uh, nineties, <laughs> maybe oh. even eighties. Uh, nineteen ninety two. Oh wow! Go. Yeah, look at Chris Christian Bale is so young. Yeah. You can always tell. Little, I had to get my Broadway fun facts in for you. You can mm. always tell who's been on the Newsies lately because Newsies is always running somewhere. It's one oh, of those classic okay. ones that's always running somewhere. But it requires so many jumps from the like chorus boys. Mm -hmm. You can always tell who's been on the newsies lately because their thighs will be massive. Because they've had to do <laughs> a thousand jumps a day. For doing all the jumps. From doing all that's the funny. jumps in the newsies, yeah. They can't fit in their little tailored pants. Yeah. Like they cannot. Well, because they're also wearing like shorts <laughs> a lot of times. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because they got to look like little boys, even though they're like 28 year old men. Yeah, yeah oh. they're full adults. Sorry, sorry. I got one. I got one kid left. The clean kid. The clean kid. Yeah, I know it's it's pressure with video for you to, to have to do this quickly. Maybe in the future we have you uh, start a drawing. And then yeah, yeah. Usually in. I draw earlier in the episode because we were like talking about power sets and stuff, but we weren't really talking about power sets in this one. Yeah, this one's harder. This one was really uh really scientist news kind of. <laughs> How's your doctorate going? You almost a doctor yet? I'm trying. <laughs> You're doing your best. <laughs> doing the best I can. I sent in a manuscript for edits for a paper we want to publish which is like the second chapter, I think, in my dissertation. So I'm waiting to get that back. And I'm doing a lot of reading about this third chapter and kind of putting results stuff together. It just takes time. It's a lot of, I'd rather be outside doing research than doing the, doing the writing part. But it's coming. It's coming along. It's constantly moving, even if the movement is a little bit slow. I'm excited to do research with Ped and his team in the summer. We will. Are you allowed to tell us what you're you're doing, or is it all top secret? Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I'll wait. I'll wait for Ped till we get everything figured out. But um, once we're moving on that, maybe he'll come on and we can talk about that research and then how research in general works with scientists when you're out in the field and you know how the team works and all that. Uh, I think I can say it's about pitcher plants, so that's fun. Carnivore. Where bugs and plants intersect, truly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I think I'm just adding background details now. You'll get the <laughs> idea. You'll get the you'll get the gist. You'll get the gist, yeah. And then uh yeah, and when when you color it in we'll we'll throw that up on the on the Instagram and the Facebook and the Reddit and I guess the Twitter. Might as well. Yeah, might as well. All right, then pop, 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 pop over to the Discord. Okay. Whoop. 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 Thank you. 
complete with, with sound effects. <laughs> you guys can't hear my computer make that noise, so I have to make oh, oh, it. Oh, makes the noise. <laughs> All right. All right. If Derek can, I guess, share that on the screen. I won't peek. I'll let my reaction be... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, look at that bustle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to bustle her up because again, I think that's the more iconic look. Oh, I love that the I love the antennae are like uh like peacock feathers almost. Yeah, in the, on her, on her in fancy hat. lady hat. She's definitely taken these three orphans in um and is is using them for free child labor. But better to have a mom who. It's the eighteen hundreds. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> they're fine with it. I think yeah, they're good. They all look happy. Happy, well taken care of. If, yeah, if they're they're be. fed. They have beds now, <laughs> whereas they didn't before. Yeah, that's a it's a weird one, but the I think this episode was was worth it. <laughs> it's the drama. <laughs> yeah, he's sleeping in trees. It's all fine. Sleeping. On I mean, trunk. that kid's never climbed a tree in his life. He doesn't even know how to rest on a tree. He's never rested on a tree. He's never rested once. at a tree. That kid's only known. <laughs> lamps his whole life he climbs lamps and then lights them and then lights them <laughs> oh boy this was this was something this was uh it was fun i think this was fun and i love all the you just you just, just never know you never know when you can make an innocuous especially in this day and age imagine how the internet would have ripped him apart now oh, if boy. he had yeah. if he had been canceled or canceling <laughs> kettlewell over his over his moth controversies of saying that moths who hide well don't get eaten as much <laughs> very controversial, controversial. Canceled. um well we hope we hope everyone enjoyed the episode uh and the controversy certainly one of our more controversy you know controversy ridden <laughs> episodes riddled <laughs> well the scientists have all been in fighting all this time all right. Well, if you want to find us, you can find us in all the usual places. Reddit. I mean, you said Instagram. Yeah. Twitter. Or X oh. or whatever it's called itself. It's Twitter. It's still Twitter. It's, it'll all be Twitter. It's Twitter. To me. <laughs> um, I mean, the odds are, though, I keep saying this, but I it'll be Twitter again someday. Once someone <laughs> rests away from yeah. Elon. And Elon will be like, all right, you can have it. And then they'll be like, the first order business is to make it Twitter again. Twitter. And it'll just be like this weird little history of like, remember when Twitter was X for like three years? And everyone was like, we tried <laughs> not to. Remember that? <laughs> I mean, it's well, just stupid to give up that level of branding. It's just yeah. stupid, a horrible choice. Anyway, the point is you can find us on the internet and we'll find <laughs> you on the internet if you don't find us. And Not in a threatening okay. way, though. Not in a threatening way, in a loving way. In the way that your mom finds you. Your mom knows. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. We love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bugs Need Heroes was created by Derek Conrad and Kelly Zimmerman. Hosted by Amanda Allen Nide and Kelly Zimmerman. Bugs Need Heroes is produced and edited by Derek Conrad, with some assistance from Chelsea Bodden and a few cats. Character art is by Amanda Allen Nide. Our music is Ladybug Castle by Roll Music. Got a bug question? Email us at bugsneedheroes at gmail.com. Check us out at bugsneedheroes.com, and most of the socials are under Bugs Need Heroes. Thank you to the Entomological Society of America for the Chrysalis Fund grant. Remember that show Pepper Ann? Pepper Ann, Pepper Ann, way too cool for seventh grade. No, I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Well, Pepper she's Ann. she's way too cool for seventh grade. <laughs>